everyone, I'm Meng Yu. Today I'm going to present two female composers in the 19th century. The first person is Maria Szymanowska, who was born in 1789 in Warsaw. She is a notable female pianist at that time, and she started to gain her professional piano training at her young age. And she also gave concerts around Europe after she became famous. And her final years was in St. Petersburg, where she gave lessons to the students, and she also did some compositions here. She is an influential composer who was in the era before Chopin. Although she didn't have many famous compositions as Chopin's, but she played a very important role in the female composer stage and contributed to the development of Polish art sounds in the 19th century. Her compositions has included 100 music works, which has piano solo works and short pieces. Also, she wrote 20 accompaniment works she has a lot of piano works for solo and other different instruments. So today I take Nocturne in B flat major as an ex example to dig in from its musical form, technique, and performance guide. This piece was published in 1852. It's performed as a repertoire of salon music also, it is a very elegant and dedicated nocturne, which has some similarities to Chopin's. I will play, play the recording now. So this nocturne is based on a variation technique with ABA form. Let's hear the recording now to really get some idea about what is the variation technique throughout the beginning of this piece.
So this is the first part of the variation technique entry. And then we can hear a lot of the 16 notes happen to make a wonderful variation process here. And then let's go to hear a little more. Okay, and here, this is Chopin's Nocturne Opus 9, number two, which has similar variation technique applied to this Nocturne as well. And now it has more flowing, varied melody through the right hand in this piece. And we can hear something from the recording as well. Here we can hear a lot of the elements happens to more into the variation technique in here and also here. But however, Chopin is more preceding the Maria's this kind of technique, variation technique from Maria, but both of them still has some differences here. So let's go to another slide. Okay, then the left hand accompaniment tester supports the right hand melody by retaining a rich accompaniment here. The harmony change happens twice in the measure. Let me play the recording. The left hand accompaniment tester also appears in the short pants nocturne opus 33 number two. There are some similarities through the rich accompaniment support to the right hand melody here as well. Both of these two works reflects very dramatic romantic technique and with some classical conventions in the nocturne's compositions.
see here, we can see from the picture, there are a bunch of chords to show different dynamic ranges, from piano to sforzando, not turning B flat major, apply the chordal texture to achieve a rich texture in the sound. And in the meantime, it also made two chords change each measure. Let me play the recording. It is similar to the Northern B flat major here in the perspective of this chordal texture throughout left and also right hand, right hand. And we also can see there are a lot of the dynamic happens to change here to make a rich sound effect here. Then let's go to the performance guide. I will show a little bit example how to make the Northern flat major to make it as wonderful as make it comfortable for the performance to properly have a good routing to practice. So okay. So in this Northern we can have some of the left hand practice with proper motions on the arm and also the wrist to help. So for example, at the beginning, we hear the left hand comes with several. Comes with some of the big, big leaves between the left hand accompaniment. So we can have the left hand very, very gentle touch at first, and then we can have proper left hand the motion. For example, we can have the arm to and also the wrist to help to lead the notes to take the lead more easier. importantly is first of all this kind of motion is just a helper it's not a from the point to start so the point of we start to play has to we have to make sure we have the high accuracy of the note so firstly we need to find the notes at first and then we have to make sure the fingers the finger pad or fingertip to start to properly get the notes and then have the wrist and the things to help. And then the second thing I wanted to mention during the performance is about the balance between left and the right hand. So mostly in this Northern and also Chopin's Northern, we have left hand, this kind of triplets accompaniment texture here. So which means left hand, it's just giving atmosphere for the right hand support, right? So now I would say the left hand just make the finger more closer to the piece. Make a very gentle touch. And the third thing I already add on here is about the proper pedal use. So the last one more thing is to drag and push the tempo to make some rubatos. Rubato is a very important the is the kind of the art way for the romantic composer to make some different things in the 
romantic period. And now, let's go to the next composer who is in here. Okay. So in here, this is the second female composer, Techna Badazilska Baranowska. She was a Polish composer and a child prodigy who published her first piece in 1843. She wrote about 35 compositions for piano. The most famous one is a maiden's prayer, Opus 4. Let me play the recording for you. Also based on a variation techniques, we can see a bit details in the score here. So, da, 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 and then also here. So let me play the recording to hear again. <laughs> okay, we just heard a introduction what we don't have heard before the nocturnes from maria and also the nocturnes from chopin so in this piece the composer applied a new manual to her composition which is giving an introduction to this piece and this is very very famous after the early romantic era so most composers just giving a short introduction to start their piece to tell me the beautiful melody and the stories around it. So this is the first variation from the theme at the beginning here. 
and then they vary a lot of times at the at the end and also with this kind of different variation techniques happens to different sections the technical requirement becomes more high around this piece so i will talk a little about the performance guide later now let's go to okay so in here we can see the shop pants modern opus 9 number two steel and which is also based on a variation technique throughout the melody too so here the and then the melody here changed a little bit moving a little bit faster to 16 notes and also there are something very interesting here with the, the nocturnes is their rhythmic pattern almost similar so here the shop has nocturne with the dotted quarter note and also that happened in maria's the nocturne number nocturne in b flat major as well now let's go to the last one more part. So in here we have basic harmonic progression one to two to five seven to one, which is tonic to supertonic and then dominant seventh and to tonic again. So this is safely keeps the convention from the classical era and also the form in this piece is coming with the introduction what I talked before which leads to a new trend to a romantic period for the later works. And thirdly, there is more lyrical melody in this piece, for example, through these octaves. And the last one more point about this whole piece, their musical forms and also the characteristics through the texture here is the chordal accompaniment. The chordal accompaniment here is a little bit different than the Nocturne in B flat major because we have something repeated chord here. So we have the chord on the tonic and then it just goes up to an invention from the tonic and to repeat this kind of chord three times. Now, let me go to the performance guide. So in this piece, we have a lot of the octaves which will make a technical challenge for us to play. For example, at the beginning, we have both hands very, very strong uh, in a 40 dynamic marking to support this kind of octaves. So that require, require performance with very flexible fingers and also relaxed arms. So before that, I would suggest to do a leap to here and then a leap, a long leap and a on the keys to prepare that. And then I would suggest to just make the fingers still closely to the keys, which make it easier to approach to this kind of challenging octaves. And also in here, because in the introduction, we have some elements to lead to the octave the next. So I would say to have more practice on the pinky. Mostly the octave, we will have to point out more about the pinky note. So I would say to practice more for the pinkies exercise. And also at the beginning we have, so that also comes with some articulations in legato. So that requires us to have properly use the wrist and arm motions to help to building up these kind of phrases. So we, how we can do for that, which is I would suggest you study from the key, very close to the key themselves, and then study from the very soft touchy, and also trying to have the upper arm to push a little bit 
also, I would say to think about more the direction of this audience. So from a lower registration to a higher registration. And then think about you are not only play this octaves, think about you are having your hands, your arm to draw some beautiful lines throughout here. And the second point is, I wanna say, we have to think about a very, very important usage through the breaks between different measures. For example, we have the phrase, And we have to think about take a break here and then so that will make a very different change in the get make these kind of tensions through the arm elbow to the arm and the wrist to make these tensions goes away for a while and that will also prepare better for the next phrase and now the last one more important point is the good balance between the right hand and left hand. Of course, we have the chordal pressure here to make a better and also a richer harmonic support here, but it doesn't mean we can, we have to bring out a little more about the chordal pressure about the left hand accompaniment. So my point is just make the left hand practice more. Also, to think about what is the most important layer we need to bring out at here. And then also make your fingers and your wrist closer to the keys and starting from the key themselves. To like you have a very expensive piano and then you don't want to play as much as possible because the piano maybe you doesn't want to hurt it right and then we just start to very soft playing here and then think about the depth of the keys you wanted to give on here so maybe a little bit half to make the balance a little bit better on the left hand okay so that's all thank you